Okay guys, so welcome to this second part. We're gonna dive in more in how the code handles stuff, right? Um, it's really hard to explain. I didn't think explaining math and code this kind of stuff was so hard. I think it's like the fourth time I'm redoing this video, but hopefully this is the right time. So I decided to split it a bit more in order to keep it short and easier to digest. So first of all, we're going to discuss how the data is laid out in memory. So I'm using a simple array, right? Where the elements are laid out row-wise. So let's say we have this matrix. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, so this is our matrix. The way the data is laid out is row major. So we're going to have one, two, oops, two, three, then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right? So that's how the data is going to be laid out in memory. Now, how can you access an element that you want? Let's say you want to access four, right? W what is this element? How can you find it, right? So let's say we have a three by three matrix. So basically what you want to do is grab the second row, the first element in the second row. And the way it's done, it is done with this formula, which formula probably is a big word, but so the index of the element that you want is going to be row, let's say row, I just call it R, row index time the width of your matrix and what's the width of your matrix is the number of columns correct and then plus the index inside that row so which is basically is your column index So that's the formula we are going to use, right? So let's say this is matrix A. So matrix, which is going to be um, one zero, right? Because basically usually you write a matrix element in this way, where I is the, the rows and J is the columns. So is row one, J0, right? So I is basically your row index, index, and J is your column index, all right? So how do you access that? So if you expand the formula, we get row index is one, so one times number of columns, so in this case we have three columns, plus the, fir uh, the column index, which is zero. So the result is one times three is three. And is this correct? Let's figure out. So this is index zero, index one, index two, index three, and is indeed correct, All right? So let's say, what about this one? This little guy here. So it's going to be A, let's see, row two, column one, All right? So let's expand the formula again. And we get, um, so row index, so 2 times 3, which the row, plus 1, right? Should be correct. So we get 6 plus 1, which is equal 7. Is 7 correct? Let's see. So this was 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it's indeed, and that's 8, is indeed correct, right? So that's usually how you index a matrix using a flat buffer, right? That's really common, that's how you index everything, for example, in a GPU, when you want to index the pixel of an image, or stuff like that, right? So that's that's the usual way. If you do column-wise, the thing is the same, you just swap the indices, right? So that's the first things I wanted to cover. Next things I want to cover is, I didn't cover it quickly, I covered it quickly last time, is what happens when you're solving and you have a zero 
on the leading diagonal, right? If you remember, in order to zero out, we are going to compute a ratio for which we subtract the row. So, for example, we want to zero out those two. Oops, I can do it. There we go. I want to zero out those two values here, right? So this is row zero, row one, and row two. As we said before, what we will do is row zero, the first element, the, our our ratio is going to be the first element of row one divided the first element of row zero. And if it was the second row, it was going to be first element so the, the index 1 of row 2 divided index 1 of row 1 and so on walking down the diagonal this way All right. but you can clearly see this, this line here expand to 4 divided by 0 and that's not something you want to do division by 0 open black holes and destroy things right so you don't want to do that but what, what can you do? So as we said before, there is the concept of pivoting, where what you do, you swap the columns, the, the rows around, and that this operation is not going to affect the result. All right. But let's keep in mind we are also working in the system. We always have the solution vector. So if we swap a row, we need to swap to do the same kind of swap in the solution vector. Otherwise, the result will change because basically we are changing the the right hand side of an equation. So you just want to basically swap the whole thing down. All right. So once you do that, you end up with a matrix which is four, five, six, zero, two, three. And your algorithm works exactly the same. So the first things in order to do pivoting, you check that your element you're going to divide to is not zero. If it is, you start crawling down the rows, find an element is not zero, and you swap those two rows. And then your algorithm can continue as usual. All right? So I wanted to recover that quickly so we have less stuff to cover when we actually check the code. Okay? Um, so in next video, we're actually going to see finally some code. Alright, so see you in the next one, guys.